So for your black belt, you have to write a black belt report. This is pretty common fare. I've had to do this for my Hapkido black belt. I've had to do this in Taekwondo. I even had to do a paper for Brazilian Jiu Jitsu back in the day. So uh, it's not uncommon to kind of have to do some type of black belt thesis, right? So uh, we, it, it, we have adapted ours a little bit from what was required from some of us back in the old days but we still have a black belt paper to write. Now, the way we accomplish a large goal, such as a 15 page black belt paper, which I realize is more of a paper than what most of you have ever written in high school, right? Let alone some of you who are even a little bit younger than that. So the way we accomplish a big goal is by breaking it up into littler goals, into more manageable chunks. Indeed, that is what the entire progress to black belt is. We go through the color belt step by step on our way towards black belt. And so we do the same thing with the report and starting at fifth cup for your green stripe, we are, uh, we have you do basically chapters on your report. So by the time you are a first cup getting ready to test for black belt, you have the paper mostly all written. We make you add another chapter to it, uh, but basically the whole thing is written out. Now the chapters are based on the five rules of the Warang, which is one of the earliest examples of kind of a warrior ethos anywhere in the world. It predates the code of the samurai. Some would argue it actually was one of the uh, foundations or influences of the code of the samurai. But it's, uh, it is, again, one of the cultural treasures of the Korean martial arts, and it is something that we can still learn from today. So, as I said, starting at Green Stripe, part of your testing requirements is to do a chapter each belt. Now, some of you are like, Maybe objecting and going, well, wait a minute, I'm only going for my green stripe. I'm not, I'm not testing for my black belt. What do I have to do that for your black belt? But I'm not interested in making green belts. We're interested here in making black belts. And as I said, the best way to accomplish a more long-term goal is to break it up into more manageable, less intimidating parts. So even if you are not getting ready to test for your green stripe, you are still welcome, especially if you have a little downtime now, to go ahead and get started on some of your reports. You can always work ahead to the next report when there's downtime, vacation, etc. So we're going to take a moment, and we normally don't do this except for in summer camps. So we take a little time in some of our summer camps to go over and give a little more of a tutorial on how to write them. But we're gonna take this downtime that we have now to go over these more specifically. So kind of take some notes, be ready to go. All right, so the first rule of the law rang is loyalty to king. The second rule is obedience to parents. We actually started a long time ago. We started with writing obedience to parents first. And truthfully, the reason we switched the order was because since some of you need your parents to basically dictate for you, we thought it might be a little more helpful to get them on board if we started with obedience to parents first. But make no mistake, loyalty to king is your first, is the first rule. We'll come back to that point in a minute. Okay. The first paper you have to write is obedience to parents. Okay. Now, why should you be obedience to your parents? A lot of show obedience to your parents. Why should you be obedient to your parents? Well, a lot of times the answers are so I don't get grounded, so I get things I want, and things like that. Okay. Well, so obviously that is a very superficial answer. Although there is some practicality to it, we're going to come back to that. But first and foremost, I would expect your report to center around basic aspects of courtesy and respect and a way to show them appreciation and support for what they have done for you, including taking you and paying for your martial arts lessons. Uh, I suspect they've done a lot more than just that, though. Okay? And uh, again, showing respect and showing obedience is a way to thank them in different ways. Okay? 
So I would expect the paper to, to include some of that. Now, we should also be obedient to other people, our teachers at school, our instructors in the dojong, etc. But that is not the subject of the paper, right? You can make a brief parallel to it, but half of your paper should not be talking about all the people you should be obedient to. Because the paper is not about obedience. The paper is obedience to parents. Now, as we said, this is to show respect, this is to show thanks, this is to show uh, as, as part of uh, the family unit. But at the same time, I would also, there is some practical value in being obedient to your parents. Because chances are the rules that your parents are giving you are not just to, you know, give you a hard time or to make your life difficult, right? They have... They have some extra wisdom. Those rules are typically designed to show, uh, keep you from an, uh, enduring hardship that in their wisdom they can see coming. Either they learned the hard way when they were your age or about or a kid and they don't want to see you uh, repeating the same mistakes. And so by listening to them, you don't reinvent the wheel and basically go through that yourself again, but you can learn from their wisdom. Okay? And so life goes a lot easier sometimes when you are obedient to your parents. So there is a practical value for it um, of standing on the, their wisdom. Okay? The second report, the first rule is loyalty to king. Okay? So there are a couple of different ways that you can take this, but... Loyalty to king, there's a reason that becomes first. Okay? So there are, you know, we don't have a king per se, but uh, we can certainly take this report one of two ways. We can either take it in terms of loyalty to our Lord and Savior king. Okay? Uh, if you have a, you know, if you uh, have faith in a particular religion, and often that is your king. Okay? Or just we can take it more broadly in patriotism and civic duty in general, okay? Uh, there are, again, metaphors or analogies to other authorities right, in your life. Again, other teachers in the dojang, whatever. We have a much smaller fiefdom than, than what we're talking about when we're talking about this, though. So again, we need to stay focused on patriotism, civic duty, or again, uh, allegiance to a higher sovereign, okay? But, uh, there's a reason that, for example, uh, we enjoy the freedoms we do. And that is because certain heroes, the military, presently and in the past, were willing to put their country ahead of their own family needs and were willing to be deployed, be away from family, friends, loved ones, and maybe even the a greater sacrifice for the sake of the country. Someone has to go beyond just the family union. Loyalty King comes first because if we don't, then our way of life, the country as we know it, and then is in jeopardy. And then that jeopardizes not only our family, but lots of people's family in the tribe, the whole tribe suffers. Okay? So there's a reason that comes first. And we need to keep that in mind in terms of loyalty to the king. But again, loyalty in uh, for a lot of us is, is not that type of sacrifice yet, especially if we're a kid. But how can we, uh, again, show patriotism? Uh, what are our civic duties? Uh, how do we show respect um, for and loyalty to the king in other ways? Uh, and sadly, some even adults today are... Um, not doing a great job of exemplifying or modeling some of that behavior that should come with that concept. The third rule and your third report that you will have going as a uh, testing for Brown is uh, honor to friends. Uh, sorry, testing for, I totally lied to you, testing for your purple stripe. Okay. is honor to friends. Okay. And so why should we be honorable to our friends? What does honor look like? What type of behavior is that? What is expected of us as being a friend? Okay. 
okay? And the important thing I want to impress upon you here is a lot of times, you know, we, and yes, there is something to be saying, said about being a good friend, but then you're probably going to have people who want to be your friend more and everything else, right? But just because other people are not a good friend to you doesn't mean that you can't be a good friend to them. Honor is more of an individual, is more of a personal thing. And we can have that to people regardless of how we are treated, right? It is not a contractual relationship. Okay? Honor to friends isn't, you know, I'm going to be nice to, you know, or I'm not, I'm going to be nice to this person. So maybe I get something out of it down the road, right? I'm going to, you know, help. Uh, I'm going to be nice to this guy at lunch and share my, uh, lunch with him or my dessert with him so that he can help me in my homework later on. Yes, friends do things for each other, right? That's what friendship is about. And, but it's not just a contractual transaction, tit for tat, quid pro quo type thing, okay? It is, it, you know, again, it is about how you approach friendship regardless of how or what people do to you. The next rule is never retreat in battle. Now, battle today for most of us isn't probably physical battle. It is more about obstacles in life. Okay. I would hope that this one, you could even use plenty of examples from martial arts about how you've learned that lesson. Okay. And not just sparring the big bad guy in the tournament that's a foot taller than you and everything else. Although showing fortitude, showing fighting spirit is part of never retreating battle. But again, ret never retreating in battle, battle refers to obstacles in life, right? And we have lots of maxims besides just that one for dealing with that. Chong Shin, Indomitable Spirit, Fall Down Seven Times, Get Up Eight. All, uh, you know, the drop hollows of stone, not by its force, but by its frequency. All those examples of perseverance in martial arts that uh, means that we dust ourselves back up, we keep, get back up, we dust ourselves off, we keep trying. Now, it doesn't say, notice it doesn't say win all the battles. It just says don't run from them. Okay. So, failure is okay, right? Failure is sometimes part of the process. Not giving up, not retreating, that is the bigger lesson, right? It's not failing, it's not getting back up is the problem. Okay? It's quitting is the problem. Okay? So again, uh, having a healthy perspective on goal setting and being able to take failure in stride is part of never retreating in battle. The last rule is the one that sometimes students have the hardest time translating to modern day life, and that is never retreat in battle. Uh, totally lied to you there. Make a sensible kill. Okay? What does make a sensible kill mean? Well, basically more broadly speaking, it is talking about being having an appropriate level of response or a sense of justice. Now, if you're a hunter and you want to talk about, you know, other ways of, you know, being responsible with, with life and things like that, well, okay, you know, that there's other ways to take that rule beyond just the battlefield or whatever from previous, you know, again, moral code, warrior codes, but how does it apply today for most of us? Again, is, is much more of a uh, just sense of justice, being more appropriate or measured in our responses to the certain situation. Now that might be physical, right? In terms of appropriate level of force, in terms of self-defense, that's certainly we something we have to take into account, we are both morally and legally obligated to do just the amount of damage in order to protect ourselves and not punish the aggressor by going beyond that. Okay? And so we have to have an understanding concept of that. But it goes beyond just physical altercations. Right? If someone calls you a name, what is the appropriate response? If someone is bullying you, what is the proper response? Right? Yes. You might have to stand up for yourself, but there's overkill. 
We can go, we can, uh, again, we can, uh, if we're in a bad mood and, you know, someone does something that, you know, uh, ticks us off, right? Sometimes our reactions, our emotional reactions can go overboard. That is wanting, that is not being uh, sensible or justifiable in our use of force. I'm guilty of that myself sometimes. We all are. Okay? but being able to better understand how to make a sensible kill. Okay? And then your last action, part of the report is dealing with rules and expectations or roles, expectations of being a black belt. But we'll talk more about that when you're getting ready for your black belt. In the meantime, as you're going through the ranks, or as I said, even if you're a little bit, uh, if you're not quite, to the, the reports yet, but you wanna get a head start, these are some things to think about as, as far as uh, starting your outline, starting your writing process. Mom and dad, if your kid is a little younger, by all means, give them prompts to help them understand some of this a little bit. That's certainly okay. We don't expect them to be able to come up with that, but you know, uh, on obedience to parents. And I, I had to do this with my kids too, right? So, um, you know, on obedience to parents. Can you think of an example of when you didn't listen to mom and dad and it turned out to bite you, right? Um, make them think about the time that you told them not to, uh, you know, play with that toy or it's gonna break and, you know, cause they were in the wrong part of the house or something like that or something happened or, you know, you told them to slow down on their bike and they did and then they crashed or whatever it was, right? So um, you can certainly prompt some answers from them and kind of dictate and flow the decision or whatever else, okay? As you go through it. Uh, if, you know, again, if you're a person of faith, there's lots of examples in the Bible. You can tie in Bible stories. I don't want to read the entire you know, chapter in the Bible. I've probably read that myself. So I don't, you can make allusions to it or whatever, but it gives you a chance to tie that in with the kids as well, okay? So some guidelines, some tips on how to write the papers. And in this downtime, now's maybe a chance to get some of that banged out as well. Good luck.